this 11 day reset. And I have here tonight, the none other than Dr. Rick Lee. And Dr. Rick Lee is a friend and a fellow runner. Let me just put uh, us both on spotlight just a second. And Rick, there we go. Beautiful. And so Rick, thank you so much for coming on. Rick has been a chiropractor in Toronto since 89. And he has an undergraduate degree in kinesiology from U of W. And he's also certified in ART and clinical nutrition and clinical acupuncture. He enjoys fitness and hockey. And I know he loves running. I've run with this guy. Boston Marathon 2014, or no, 2013. Yoo-hoo! And uh, he has worked in isogenics in his clinics since 20, uh, 2006, so the year before me. And he's worked with associates all throughout the world. So through North America, Mexico, Europe, Australia. And it's allowed him to create a residual income stream over and above his chiropractic income. As a result, he stopped trading time for money, sold one of his practices in 2010, and reduced his clinic hours from 40 plus to just 18 hours a week. Maybe it's less now. Uh, you know, I've had to actually increase it because of COVID. Oh. Just to keep everyone spaced out. I used to do two half days and a full day. Now I have to I do three full days just to make sure that you know people aren't running into each other. Okay, COVID changed a few things, right? Yeah, yeah. So Plan B has become his, yeah, has become his Plan A, which has allowed choices in his life and career. And today he's, we're going to talk about stress and perception, and maybe throw a little bit about my favorite product, Ionix. Fourteen years taking Ionix two times a day, <laughs> it's definitely like in the mountains running. It's definitely doing something, but. As far as stress levels, and I know they're very high for many people now, I just can't wait to hear what you got to say, Rick. So dive All in, right. my friend. Well, thank you very much, uh, Carrie. And you know, you you guys have a great facilitator and coach and leader in uh, Carrie taking you through these uh, 30 days. And I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us for this evening. Um, I was saying earlier, I think Anna was the only one on, and we were just talking with Carrie about Oh, this is just going to be a very informal discussion. As we go along, I use the PowerPoint more or less to just kind of keep me on point because mm -hmm. I tend to go into rabbit holes and stuff. Um, I, this is actually part of a section of um, one that I do for my class, uh, sorry, my class, my, my clients, and I do this once a month, but this is one section of it. So I've, I've expanded that aspect. And if it looks kind of uh, just kind of slapped together, it is. <laughs> so, so just bear with me on some of this stuff. And, and again, you know, as I said, it's informal discussion. So if you have questions along the way, feel free to interrupt and just ask. Um, I'll just, you know, answer what I can. This isn't stuff that I've made up. Uh, this is stuff that I've been learning uh, about and just trying to put it all together and, and how it can impact, um, you know, people's lifestyles and how, uh, so I try to teach this to just try to enhance your own lifestyle with this. So I'm going to just share the screen here. Got that great picture that Carrie provided for me. <laughs> Get going. Okay, so there we go. Uh, ah. So let's, uh, yeah, there we go. Stress and perception. Um, let's go. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about um, this, uh, and and I know for. Hopefully no, you're on all millennials go, what the hell's that? <laughs> like, okay, that's a phone. And um, a phone during the course of the day, it's like, okay, well, what, what's that? It's a phone call. Oh, all right. No worries. I'll pick it up. But what if this phone goes off in the middle of the night? What if this suddenly um, happens? And so what, what are you feeling? Well, for a lot of people, this is uh, very alarming. It's just like going off in the middle of the night and suddenly their pulse increases, heart rate increases, blood pressure. Uh, some people may just suddenly, you know, just lose or some people just get all flush. And, and what is this? It's just a phone call. No one's hit you with the phone. No one's clubbed you with, over the head with a bat. Nothing. Nothing has even touched you. 
it's how you perceive that call. And uh, when I, and you know, it's different because I usually ask for people, okay, so what do you notice or what, what do you normally associate with this in the middle of the night? Well, you know, it's an emergency or, or someone's in trouble, uh, it's bad news. So all these different things are going off in your mind because that's what you've related to a call in the middle of the night. And so that just, that's just the, as I said, that's an event. And when we talk about this kind of thing, and I'm going to allude to this a little later, uh, but you can see how it instantly changed your body physiology just by you thinking about what that stimulus meant as opposed to what it actually is. Okay, so um, a little history on this. So Dr. Hans Salier, I don't know if anybody familiar with Dr. Hans Salier, okay. Neuroendocrinologist, he's act, um, out of McGill University did his work uh, in the 1930s. And he came up with uh, what we call him the father's stress. And he created what he called the uh, general adaptation syndrome or gas. And what he did is he took this um, sets of mice. And you might've studied this in uh, psychology or, or, or uh, one of your behavioral classes where in each cage, he had sets of mice in the tin. And on this tin, he just put random electric shocks through. So in one of the cages, they had a little lever and the mice learned how to control the lever by pressing it and then um, stopping the electrical shocks. In the other cage, they had no such ability. So my question is, what do you think happened to the mice um, in either cage? So in the one cage, of course, where they had control, they were able to shut it down. And of course, you know what? Random shocks are gone, everybody's calm. Mm -hmm. On the other side, of course, they had no control. And so there's this sense of helplessness, this, um, they just succumb to, okay, well, we're just going to get shocked every single time. And when he autopsied them, there were three things that happened, or three things that they found, so nothing happened. But these were consistent findings, um, and whether it was electrical shock, um, extreme temperatures, or other types of stress. It didn't matter the type of stress, it's just that when they were under uh, a lot of stress, that this is what happened. Uh, thinning mucosal lining, atrophy of the thymus glands, which affects immune function, and enlargement of the adrenal glands, which is uh, cortisol, which is the uh, uh, hormone for stress. So if you equate this to what happens in human beings, when we think of thinning mucosal lining, we think of ulcers. When we think of atrophy of thymus or immune function, we talk about, you know, people are sick all the time. And we talk about enlargement of adrenal glands. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the location, everything. And when we talk about the HPA uh, axis and they release cortisol when in excess is not good for the body. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So the, these are the types of things. Well, uh, you might've heard of people, you know, they suddenly start losing their hair or they get these really weird skin rashes and, and when people come in with these type of symptoms, you're, you're looking at, okay, what's, what's the bottom line, um, you know, what's causing all of this? And a lot of times when I, I take a history, I will ask about different types of stresses that are going on, not just, okay, where's the pain? This is how we're going to deal with it. Because it's not always, a, it is a physical thing, but it's a physical manifestation of something else. So if you, if you take the emotion aspect out of it, you're really missing a large piece um, because people get, if, you know, if they have the skin rash, it's not because they're missing, uh, you know, corticosteroid. It's just like saying, you, know, you have a headache because you don't have uh, Advil. It's like, no, that's mm -hmm. not the problem. So what's the problem? And, uh, and again, this is why you have to talk about, you know, what's going on in individuals, uh, individuals life with regards to, um, you know, whether it's work or whether it's uh, personal matters or whether it's uh, something else that, that uh, it may be something from their childhood, you know, all these different things would expand a little bit later. So if we just talk about this, I just want to, so this, when we talk about the uh, adrenals and how everything works, this is the axis that I'm going to refer to the HPA or uh, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, because this, as I said, the perception comes in through the mind or the brain, and then it sends a message through ACTH, which then goes to the pituitary and releases, um, sorry, the ACTH, it goes down into the adrenals which then it increases, sorry, secretes the uh, cortisol. 
And I just wanted people to understand where these locations were in case they're like, okay, what the hell is that? Because not everyone took uh, science or anatomy. <laughs> now, here's a little comic strip that may help to explain a little better. So, um, you know, persons under stress, we look, stress causes the hypothalamus to release CRH, um, cortisol releasing hormone, which stimulates the anterior pituitary to release ACTH, which then goes down to the adrenals. So lots of exams. Okay, I made a bad choice. And then what does it do? It increases uh, cortisol from the adrenals. And this is where you have some of the challenges. If we look at the normal cortisol rhythm, uh, ideally, this is what it should look like. And, and I like these two graphics because in the morning, it should be a little high, right? Because then you wake up and you're not sitting there trying to slam your snooze button because you don't need an alarm. You just, you know, get up when you're supposed to get up and the body knows that. And over the course of the day, as you can see, it just starts to decrease um, as the day goes on. So by the evening, when you're ready to go to bed, it's really low and you're able to sleep. If you look at melatonin, which is the opposite because melatonin, we all understand helps us um, with sleep. Then it increases in the evening when you're trying to get to sleep. And so everything is beautiful in this rhythm. What happens, however, if people have excess cortisol or it's out of sync, is that you see where that melatonin on the right side, that, that red curve is? Well, that becomes the cortisol curve. So it's the complete opposite of what it should be. So that becomes the new cortisol curve. And this is why people are having coffees in the morning. Because I, I say, well, how much, you know, one of the questions I ask is, do you drink coffee? Okay, how much do you drink? Oh, I have four or five cups. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Okay. So why do you have four to five cups? Are you like a professional athlete where you need to just, you know, bump your system up and get it ready to go all the time? No, um, I have the coffee to just kind of wake up so that I get ready for the day. Okay. The indicator that something's wrong already, because when you have co coffee's great. And because um, for the longest time I said, you know what, you shouldn't have all that caffeine, but a little bit of caffeine before you work out and all the studies have shown that it's beautiful, increases heart rate, gets everything going. You're all set. Your body's set. It's ready to go. Except if it has nowhere to go, now you've artificially raised all of this within your body and it's got nowhere to go. That's not good for the body. It doesn't have that release. We talk about flight or fright. If you have no place for that flight or fright to go, um, it uh, creates, start, starts to create detrimental effects. Same kind of thing is, let's say, I know you're, having a tough day, the boss comes in, he just rips one a piece of, off you for whatever reason, no reason, probably, you know, he's having a hard day, so he can take it out on somebody. So inside, you're just like ramping up, you just want to slug this person. But you know what protocol says, we can't do that. So what do you do? You just eat it, you just get inside and you just, yeah. okay, so you get all stressed out inside and has nowhere to go. And this goes on. And over the course of time, and we're going to show a little bit about what happens uh, ph physiologically, this is not healthy for the body. So if you have a little caffeine for workout, awesome. Keep doing that. But if you're having four to five to get the system going because you're tired during the day, you're having it for the wrong reason. And if we follow this, this um, bad pattern, if we go to the right side and we look at that pattern, um, and if we look at the melatonin as the new cortisol curve, so at night, you know, everything starts ramping up, you know, uh, I've got challenges at work, family life is, uh, you know, it's getting tough, uh, things really suck. And then by the time you go to bed, you're all amped up, your cortisol levels are like this, and you can't sleep and you wonder why is and then you get up in the morning again, you're, you're exhausted because you didn't sleep well. And you're hitting that snooze alarm five different times. And where's my coffee to get that energy going. And so now you can see this horrible roller coaster that's going up and down in the wrong direction. And so first of all, recognize that. All right, understand it. Okay, that's why I'm having all those things. That's why I need high sugar things. Or, or if I'm carb loading or carb, sorry, carb binging is because I'm under high stress. And that when you have excess carbs, it helps to um, release, you know, some of the endorphins, get you to relax. But again, not a good way of, of doing that. So here's kind of what happens based on a little bit of what we talked about with Dr. Hans Selye and his studies. So on the left side, if you've got this stressor, okay, okay, fear-based, pain or non-pain related, and 
then it creates a physiological response. You get the cortisol excretion, you get in, um, um, adrenaline release. And if you adapt, awesome. Just like when the, you know, the mice were, you know, had that electroshock and said, okay, we hit the control button, we're good. Everything's good. Rapid return to the baseline, you recover. But on the other side where they didn't um, have control, now it's a maladaptive response. You get this helplessness and then it magnifies. And then it, it then gets prolonged. So you have excess of HPA access activation. And now you get excess cortisol, which can lead to increased inflammation, cause pain, of course, it impacts mood. And if this goes on, you can see how the, it creates that loop. And so what we want to do is find areas where we can interrupt that, that loop. But understanding how that happens is, is a big part of this. Mm-hmm. So any, so some of these are the things that can cause by excessive stress. We know that when you have excess cortisol, it inhibits fat metabolism. That's why people will increase um, weight. Um, also leptin res- resistance. Leptin is one of the hormones that help us uh, feel satisfied. And like, okay, we've had enough heat. That's all we need. Imbalances in blood sugar. And of course that leads to um, insulin resistance. And one of the things about doing the fast and doing the program that, that carries on and that you're all on is it helps to uh, restore insulin sensitivity. Uh, of course, if that continues, leads to heart disease, gut health, huge. Huge. I'm going to touch a little bit upon uh, about that later. It can absolutely affect immune uh, response and it can lead to um, autoimmune disorders. Uh, inflammation, again, we talked a little bit about that. Uh, insomnia, and exactly what we talked about how you know you have excess cortisol, you can't go to sleep. And, and so now you're having something else like sleeping pills. Oh my God, no, <laughs> no, find other ways. Don't, don't become reliant on that. And then uh, some of the things also point to impaired memory and cognitive function. So what are some of the things that can help? I, and I know, um, you know, a lot of what Carrie's doing with this program is bringing on other experts to talk about how to adapt to uh, different stresses. And, and so I'm gonna to touch a little bit upon this, but um, your support network. So you have a great uh, network of friends and family. This is, this is great in terms of support um, and, if we talk about COVID right now, COVID's a, a huge problem because it, it hasn't allowed us to keep in touch with as many people. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people who are, have felt isolated already and then they had COVID on top of that. It, it's been a really tough time for them. So, you know, if you've got some people you haven't talked to in a while, just send a text, send a message or something. You, you don't know what that little message uh, can mean for that individual uh, because you don't know what their particular situation is. Your sense of self-control. If you're confident in yourself, the ability to influence events, then you can persevere through the challenges and it's easier to take things in stride. Uh, people who are vulnerable tend to feel like things are out of control. And, and understand what you can control, what you can't control. Because some people, they, they flip out when the weather's bad. It's like, well, okay, so I don't know, when's the last time you started seeding the clouds? You don't. So what can we do? We can understand it. Okay, I can't control the weather, but I can, un- I can prep or I can control how I a, feel about the weather or how I can prepare for the weather. Um, don't try to play, you know, whatever you want to call it, God or whatever. You, you can't control some of those things. So why do you fret about it? I, I remember there was this great article about this Olympic athlete and he was about to go in the boat and have this, um, you know, great race. And, and so the... Uh, the interviewer was saying, oh, okay, so aren't you worried about the wind conditions or how the water is? And, and it kept going on and on. It's like, well, buddy, you know what? I can only control things that are in my boat that I can't control. I've done this training for four years. I can control how I paddle, how I feel, everything else. That stuff outside of the boat, literally, it's outside my boat. I can't control that. So why am I worried about it? And that's how you should look at things as well. What can you control and what's out of your control? And it's this sense of, or lack of control, if we want to talk about it, that people start to feel helpless. Uh, We talk about people on the proverbial um, hamster wheel, because like, oh, you know, I have to go to work, I have to do this. And if you look at those choice of words, you know, they have to, or they need, it's not a choice thing. 
they've made it a you know that it's not a choice thing and then i, I understand where they they have this sense of helplessness and understand that you know you do have a choice yes i know you have to parent you have to do all those different things but you can choose how you feel about doing those different things like okay why not take pride in some of the things you do? And it doesn't matter if you sweep garbage or whatever, you know, take pride. Because they always talk about, you know, how you do one thing is how you do everything. And if you sl you know, if you slack on that, where else are you slacking in life? You know, take pride in what you do. And if you, as I said, you may not be able to control such, but but understand what you can. And that's the feeling that you have or how you feel about yourself in that situation. Uh, your attitude and outlook. Okay, I think I've just talked a little bit about, but stress-hardy people have an optimistic attitude. They embrace challenges, have a strong sense of humor, accept that change is part of life, and they believe in a higher power purpose. Meditation, uh, you know, I was going to do a section on this, but I, I probably, you have someone probably doing a whole thing on meditation. So I'm not going to talk about that, but I think everybody understands the, the power of meditation, how that can help a lot of different things just by really clearing clearing this computer <laughs> that we call our mind because it's just racing we really have to calm it down and what i, I like to do as i'm just like this you know what do they, they call that the, yeah like a dog like squirrel you know i need guided meditation i need to listen to somebody's voice to tell me what to do tell me what to think so that i'm not thinking about something else but they say just breathe and you know just let everything go it's like not happening <laughs> tell me what to think about Right. Uh, but that's just me. Um, other people probably, you know, you know, have a little more uh, control over your, your, your mind. Gratitude appreciation exercises. Um, you know, I asked some people, what do you, what do you do just before you go to bed? Oh, I watch the news. Awesome. Every night. Oh yeah. Every night. What's on the news. Wow. <laughs> Nothing good rarely anything good and and i get it because they want they need to sensationalize stuff so you tune in so you go oh my god oh my god oh my god and then you're so amped up about how crappy everything is that you can't sleep because your mind's just racing you know they're going to drop the bomb tomorrow i'm not going to have any money I'm like there's going to be no food in the shop all this stuff going on it's like oh my god no wonder you feel like crap when you get up in the morning and you're not sleeping well so I talk about just this. Why don't you flip that? Why don't you just, you know, an hour before you get, turn that off. Okay. And I get it. I, you know, you don't want to be an ostrich with your head in the ground and, and not understand what's going on in the world. You want to know what's going on, but don't hang on to every single little thing. Instead, you know, what are three or four things, maybe five, maybe 10 things, whatever it is, what are you grateful for? And, and what do you appreciate? It doesn't have to be anything, you know, large and it has to be, has to have to be a thing. People always think about things and and the challenge for a lot of people is they always think what you know what am i missing versus what do i have they don't appreciate what they have they're already focusing on what they're missing what they don't have and as a result you know not very fulfilling they always think that they're missing out on something and, and you shouldn't think like that you should think of you know what do you have what do you appreciate do you appreciate that you know what today i'm not six feet under the ground and i know some people say you know what i'm just happy to be breathing I'm happy to have a roof over my head. I have a, I have a warm bed that, I, um, that I'm able to go to. I have food on the table. These little, you know, simple little things and uh, appreciate them because it's when you appreciate that aspect that then you start noticing other things. So I'm gonna talk about that a little, better, a little bit later when we talk about laws of focus. Okay, so what's my next slide? <laughs> okay, your ability to deal with the emotions. Um, you're extremely vulnerable if you don't know how to calm and soothe yourself. If you're feeling sad, angry, or afraid, ability to bring your emotions into balance will help you bounce back from adversity. Here I talk about, and, and I will talk a little bit about this in perception, but when something happens, we immediately put judgment on it, right? Like, oh, that's bad. And immediately you think it's bad. And then all these, you know, thoughts are going through your head. But it's an event. And you have to understand that things are just, events you see okay you admit it right carrie <laughs> and mm -hmm. and it's not good or bad but we put judgment on it we start labeling it and if we instead of doing a knee-jerk response just see the event for what it is and then choose how we want to respond or react to it um so i i'm sorry not react but i'd say try to respond to things versus react to things 
because React is just a knee jerk thing where, you know, whatever has gone on in your past is suddenly present and now you emoted versus, okay, well, that's happened. Okay, how do I feel about this? And then choose the response and, you know, take some time. It does take practice because, you know, we've lived our lives with so much judgment on things and, and this kind of thing. Maybe it's like, what? Oh, you mean I, I have a choice how I feel? Here's something that um, uh, someone had shared with us. Um, he was in high school with his brother and they were in the, in the States and suddenly there was this big alarm going on and they knew there was a big lockdown all of a sudden. And then one of the um, officers had come over, found him out and they said, I've got some bad news for you. Immediately, he kind of knew what was going on. His father unfortunately had been shot. His father was the principal at this particular high school. And, you know, it was, it was awful. You know, like any event like that, 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 that's horrible. And he had carried that for a while, but then he realized, you know what, um, it, it, me feeling like that's not gonna help me. So what, what can I do about this? And, and so it took him a while, but one of the exercises they talk about is when you look at something, you know, don't talk about why is this happening to me, but why is this happening for me? So then he, he went back and looked at some of the benefits of that, you know, as, as horrific as it was. Well, he said, well, because, you know, of his father passing, the school and the community actually put together a fund for him and his brother uh, to be able to go to college. And, uh, you know, and they created this money so that wherever they needed to go, that it would be paid for. And as a result of him doing that, he became a healthcare professional. And because of that, um, going to that particular school, he met his wife there. And, and with going there, meeting his wife, they were able to create this, this beautiful family and life together. And he said, if that never happened, he probably never would been able to go to higher education because they, you know, they probably wouldn't be able to afford to send him to that school. Um, his brother, in the meantime, never rebounded, became a um, high school principal, just like his dad did, but then needed all these different substances, wasn't taking care of his health. Uh, to try to deal with that, uh, that horrific event. Well, that event, right? Because he wasn't able to fully deal with it. And it wasn't until just a couple of years ago, and this is some, you know, 20 years later, that um, when I was talking to this gentleman, that his brother had finally reached out to him because he, he said, wow, you really didn't care about our dad because you've never grieved for him. He said, no, I've done my grieving, but I've had to move on. And he goes, no, you don't care. And he just thought because of the way he carried on himself that, that you know, he, he did deal with it. And then it was quite the opposite. He had dealt with it already, um, but it was his brother wasn't dealing with it. And then he reached out and said, you know what, I'm, I'm having a struggle. So can you help me? And, and now he's on a better path. So I've used that in, in a few things in, in my own life. And, um, you know, looking at something and then say, okay, what are the benefits of, of that? And you might want to use that as a tool for yourself. And we call it like a, a sum zero. So if an event occurs and you have this extreme emotion about it, look at the other side until you can balance that emotion so that when, that, when you think about that event, it doesn't stir up that emotion again. Okay, it, 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 you, when you have that experience, it doesn't suddenly increase that, that cortisol or, or fear response or whatever, you know, that thing that we talked about earlier with regards to um, uh, the, how you interpret things. Okay, so your knowledge and preparation um, about a, a situation will really help. For example, if you go into surgery, realistic picture of, of what to expect in post-op. Okay, I'm gonna share something a little closer to home. So I was in, um, I had a vasectomy a number of years ago and I happened to be in there and I saw this person I recognized like, you know, hey, what are you doing here? And it was a massage therapist. And she said, oh, my, you know, my husband's here and he's having a vasectomy done. I said, oh, really? Like, who is it? He's like, of course, you know, how many different surgeons are doing vasectomies in the hospital? The same guy, of course. And I go, what time was his? I'm like, oh, well, I'm, I must be right after him. So uh, it's kind of cool knowing that uh, he was going at the same time. So what we did is we compared notes after because I went in on the Friday and I planned to be, um, you know, working again by, uh, by Tuesday. And, you know, with what I do, you know, there's some exertion and as a massage therapist, same kind of thing. Um, so 
we we came out of it and you know it's funny so when i went in and and you know what it's what i talked about what do you can you control what can't you control i said well you know what i can't do anything once once i get in there and it wasn't like a it was just like a general no i'm sorry it wasn't general it was just a, like a local and then they said do you want to do you want to watch it go well you know what no not really don't need to watch you can just kind of point that mirror somewhere else and um and I just kind of waited and then I'm done. And then I said, okay, uh, you're ready to go. I said, really? Yep, you're, you're good. I said, I don't have to do anything. Nope, you've got the things that we talked about, you know, tidy whities ice, don't do anything stressful over the weekend, you're golden. So I went home um, and I remember this because I, you know, I had four, four young kids at the time and my wife kind of pointed me to the couch. Okay, sit there, here's the remote. What would you like to eat or drink for the rest of the weekend? I said, that was so awesome. I was ready to do one again the following weekend. So went to back, back to work Tuesday. And then the massage therapist also showed up. And uh, I'm doing, he goes, he just came in and checked on me. He goes, oh, I'm, I'm not doing well. I said, really? What, what did you do? And he goes, you know, I was on the table and suddenly I just, I just froze. I, I could just feel myself just freeze up. And, I, and what had happened for him is that he started worrying about things. That's what he meant. And as a result, he, he bruised up and, and everything. He was, he was not good for about a month's time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I've heard of this through, through others as well. And again, you know, what, what can you control? What can't you control? And, you know, it's just like when you do other things, like, well, you know what, this is happening. Um, you know, I had a tooth pulled out a while ago, had another right in the front here. And yeah, hurt like heck, but you know what? What am I gonna do? I just went in, trust the guy. You know, they're the experts, a little painful, but it was done. And, uh, you know, got it all done and got a new tooth and about a year ago. And, uh, but, but I kind of knew what was involved and you can sit there and build it all up for yourself for what, like, you know, what you're, you're fine, especially if, uh, unless you, there's something that's really, uh, crazy with the situation you're going in. So create a realistic picture of what's going to happen. And then it will be less traumatic and you will be able to bounce back. Okay, so here's some other things. How are we doing for time? Okay. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. good. All right. Okay. So deep breathing, awareness of negative thoughts, positive social connections, meditation, yoga, and there was one physical intimacy with a partner, but that's beyond the scope of what I'm going to cover today. All right. <laughs> Think twice, how the gut second brain influences mood. So this is a great article from 2010 in Scientific American, because they always talk about, you know, that gut feeling. And I think we know now that actually the second brain is the gut. And you may or may not know. And again, this is more of a, a, a general type of thing for people, because a lot of people don't know that 80 to 90% of your neurotransmitters for your brain are actually produced in your gut. So when we talk about gut health, that's why you want to have a healthy gut, because it's the biome in there that's going to produce all those neurotransmitters for this. And if they have, you know, if you've got a lousy gut health, you're going to have lousy <laughs> neurotransmitters for the brain. And guess what? You may not get the same kind of, you know, synaptic response that you're expecting. And when we think about that aspect, what about the precursors? Well, you need uh, tryptophan, which, you know, you need a good source of tryptophan, a good quality amino acid in, or proteins and amino acids in able to create, create those precursors. So that's why this program is so good because you have a very clean, beautiful source of this protein that's going to help for your gut and all the precursors for neurotransmitters for this. And that's why people's mood, um, you know, when they go through this program, mood is better, all these different things. So I just want to um, give a little shout out to why you want to be looking at gut health as well. Now, this is part of what we want to talk about is um, the adaptogenic products that Isogenics has. There's a new one we call, it's almost like um, Onyx 2.0. It's much sexier bottle and packaging. And it's got, it has a uh, kabuka in it, which we know is, is good for gut health as well. Uh, but we will talk about, oh, wait, what happened to, wait, sorry, this is out of sync. Uh, oh, I didn't put that in. Huh, wait, is it down there? Oh, okay, sorry. I'll go back. Um, 
Let's see, can I do that without going back to the beginning? How do I do that? Sorry, I might have to go back to the beginning and yeah, okay, sorry. Let me just take us down. Don't have a ton of slides. It listed all the different adaptogenic um, botanicals that are in the uh, ionics. And I know Carrie loves the product, so she could probably expand on that on another day. But very quickly, so what are adaptogens? Adaptogens are basically uh, plant products that they've grown in very extreme, harsh conditions. And uh, this was uh, created from, not created, the plants were created, but the Russian scientists had discovered this. Because back in the you know, 60s and Americans were thinking, what the hell, you know what? The Russians are killing us in the Olympics and all these different things. They, and the, the cosmonauts, they were feeding their um, cosmonauts and their athletes these adaptogens. And basically they're, uh, as I talked about plants or botanicals that are found in um, these plants that are, survive in these really harsh conditions, really, really cold or really low oxygen. And so they surmise that, well, you know what, we're a communist country. We can actually give these to our, um, you know, do experiments, but give them to our population and see how they respond. And that's what they did. They actually gave them to a lot of the, the factory workers and they found that, you know what, they were able to work longer, longer and be more productive because what these do is they try to normalize body physiology. So if you have low energy, it brings it up. If you have excess or excess cortisol, it helps to bring you back to, to normal. And that's why it's so great for athletes is that when the body starts have, going under you know, more stress, this actually helps to try to rein it in. Another great product there are eShots, one that I've taken just before this, uh, this call as well. And that's one of my go-to products. Yes, exactly, what Carrie has there. Yeah, my wife called it uh, my crack, <laughs> but in any case. Um, so these are some things that you, you also wanna look at and add to your, um, your program. And as Carrie talked about, even before we got on, she has the ionics twice a day and it absolutely helps her with all the, uh, her athletics and performance. Okay, perception. Does anybody know what kind of painting this is? Put in the chat. Okay. This is Jackson Pollock. Um, I'm not necessarily big on it, but I remember watching a, a film called The, uh, the Accountant and he had like a Jackson Pollock and I thought, wow, what was that? And, and so that's how I put it on because in this piece of art, you and I are going to see two different things. You might see something, and I'll see something, but we probably won't see the same thing because we have different life experiences. And that's the same when we look at an event, exactly what I talked about earlier. When we look at something, it's an event. And the way we perceive it or the way we interpret it or put judgment on it for some people is based on our events, what happened to us in the past. It's because um, exactly what I talked about right at the beginning of this, when the phone goes off, how do we perceive it? Oh, some people are freaked out, you know, but body physiology already changes. Other people are like, oh, you know what? That's just a phone going off in the middle of the night. Big deal. Not a problem. So they're calm. Other people freak out. Same stimulus, totally different um, body response and, and perception response to it. So for example, let's say I just tap you on the shoulder. Big deal. But let's say you grew up, you're at a funeral, your dad's funeral or someone's funeral, and everyone came up to you, oh, you know what, so sorry, so sorry to hear about, you know, passing your dad, oh, so, you know, all this, all day, all day. Next thing you know, years later, someone taps you on the back, you feel like crap, and you wonder why someone tapping on the shoulder has you feeling that way. It's because how you have interpreted that stimulus and linked a, a, um, a response with that. And so when we talk about these knee-jerk reactions that I alluded to earlier, understand where that may be coming from. And that's why you may want to explore some of your past and go to some of your childhood experiences and just kind of you know, go through it and, and see how that came together. Um, because people who were, say, uh, slighted or offended by a comment from somebody back when they were 10 years old, had them thinking this entire thing the whole time. And I will tell you, the person who gave you that slight or comment at that time isn't even thinking about you now, but you've carried that for 10, 20, 30, 40 years into your lifetime. And it, it affected how you think about things. Stop beating yourself up, let it go. 
or understand where it came from and do what I talked about. Okay, what was the benefit of that? Versus like, you know, why is that, why did that happen to me? Because we carry so much baggage and garbage that really means nothing. And then if you look at it like 80 years from now, what's it really gonna matter anyway? So why don't you just let it go now and move along with your life? So reticular activating system, um, that is the part of the brain that has you uh, focused on things and then you start looking for it, okay? Say like a red car. Suddenly you wanna buy a red car. You've seen the odd one, but now all you see are red cars. You know what? Red cars have always been out there, but suddenly you have a specific red car that you're looking for and that's all you see. And you just go, oh my God, I didn't know there's so many of these red types of cars around me. It's because that's what you're looking for. And if you talk about, you know, if you want to go to the secret or laws of attraction, that's what this is all about. It's when, that's why, you know, people who are, um, you know, they talk about the power hours, focusing on things first thing in the morning. What are my goals? What's my vision? If you look at that and just remind yourself, this is what I'm looking for. So when those opportunities come up, you actually will, quote unquote, see them. They'll be on your radar. But if you don't focus on that, and it, it's never been something that you, you know, you may like in passing, but it's like, no, this is what I want. Then it's like, okay, you've missed so many opportunities that have gone right by you. And as they talk about what you focus on grows, what you focus on seems real, because you, you may know that the brain, it can't, it doesn't interpret this reality versus a dream. It thinks it's the same because it's happened in through here. And they always talk about, you know what, if you want to make things happen, have it happen in here first for it to happen out in this reality. Um, because, and that, again, that, that's how that law of attraction works and the laws of the focus. So when we talk about, you know, are you watching the news every night? What are you focusing on? Are you looking at just, you know, the bad things that are going in life? Or are you looking at what's, what's good in life? What is your reality? And because what you ultimately focus on becomes you. And I love this from Wayne Dyer, change the way you look at things and the things you look at will change. I thought that was really, really powerful because again, you're, the way you see the world is based on you, what you, your life experiences. And until you understand that or start changing or being more open to, to other things, that's never gonna change. You're always gonna see that same thing. The same that, that Jackson Pollock thing, you're always gonna see, well, that's a, that's a mess for some people, or that's a beautiful thing. Um, it depends on, on what you want to, uh, want to look at or focus on. So I am done. Thank you. Ricky, my goodness, that was awesome. So many nuggets. And I have, uh, looking in the community, I, I think, Vivian wrote here, incredible and so relevant, Dr. Rick, in your reference to perception. I love that too, the the, the Jackson Pollock thing. Yeah, yeah. Because everyone, it's the same thing with mountain climbing. Someone looks at this mountain like a, oh, like a, a kid in the playground, mm. truly. And they get just warm feelings of excitement. Another looks at it in terror. <laughs> and I've had on the same mountain yeah. tour, those two perceptions standing side by side. One having a panic attack. Right. And the other one, let's go guys. Yeah. And it's all on their perception of in the moment, whether something happened in the past or mm. it, it triggers something, but there's two people on the same like path looking at the same thing and it's it's crazy yeah right but, so, but so but so relevant right and so and because they're, they're having a panic attack their heart is pounding yeah. she's crying yeah and uh wow wow but, but it's a perfect example of life and how life is and how we see different things in life and how mm -hmm. every person is and that also allows compassion that you never really know how this person has seen things yeah. this other person right yeah it's not That's the way i not everyone's seeing it like i'm seeing it you know and it, and when you know that there's that okay you can 
uh, have a little more compassion for people too. And well, Anna, Anna knows, and you know, I'm a big Goggins fan. So what uh, fan? Goggins, David Goggins. Ah, Coggins. Okay. Yeah. Gog yeah. And, and, and so when you look at what he's been through and you put in perspective, um, you know, I, I always relate to him because like when I'm thinking, oh, that's going to be tough. It's like, oh, what am I thinking? I'm so soft. So just get out there and do it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. It's all, as you say, it's all, it's all perspective. So, yeah, I, I just want to open um, if Julia or Anna, I wanted to say one more thing, but if you guys want to ask anything or point out anything, Now's the time, ladies. No, I just want to say thank you. It was really interesting. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Anna. Awesome. Um, I just want to add to what you're what you mentioned about the um, perception and the moment and the stress because I, I had something happen today mm. where and this is relevant to what we're talking about. Um, I kind of trusted in someone online and I ended up paying them money for, for a session, but they were a fake person. Oh, this right. was a, I was scammed. Yeah. So my, I watched my body react because my gut feeling early on when I connected with this person is something's not right. Yeah. But yeah. I, I was kind of in a vulnerable moment today sure. and this person came along and I said, yes, let's do it. And with, this is without a backstory. And so I paid them through PayPal and then I knew something is off. And the moment I realized they're a fake, I, what I felt first was like the shame come up mm. of how could you not recognize that? How it was all, more about me how could you not wreck why didn't you trust your Instinct. your feeling and then i shared mm -hmm. it with someone and she had said oh well maybe someone else needed the money more than you or maybe <laughs> like how else can right. you, you right. look at it and so i like you said before what is the what's the lesson for me here what can i take from it yeah like you for said, the benefit the man that lost his father a lot that uh in the school, right? Mm -hmm. what, what's the one looked at? It, one son looked at it like this. One son looked. At it. So I mean, it wasn't a hell of a lot of money, but it was enough to make me to stir me and make me mad. Mm -hmm. And I thought, am I gonna let let this fester and spend all this energy trying to solve this and, and get that person, or am I just gonna someone yep. someone else needs that money? And so that stayed with me for hours today for a few hours wow yeah but it was more about my reaction it was more i felt i was beating myself up that i couldn't figure it out before that you yeah. know yeah that i didn't listen to my gut and it triggered some sort of shame thing so so, so everyone would perceive it differently so do you still feel that it's so weird to mention it right now do you still get that that emotion it's I feel still, it's still it, in my body a little bit. Well, it's it's pretty fresh still. So, yeah. so just just try that exercise a little bit, and you know, just write it out, just list it out, so it goes from here to here, and then, and then yeah. out until the emotions even out, and just like boop, nothing. Yeah, yeah, but it would. I felt it in my gut a while yeah. back. Yeah, I felt something's off here, but I still got to tr got to trust. Got to trust yeah. the gut. It's, it's the brain. Yeah. We, we, you know, that's so, yeah, that's, that's a beautiful example. Especially that, a nice that's clean really gut that we have, you know, when we're cleansing. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta, that's why it was, that's why it's so sensitive. The radar's on. Yeah, totally. totally. <laughs> um, amazing. So if anyone else, anything to add or online here, drop in a message on what you took away. Vivian says, thank you, Dr. Rick, for sharing your personal experience and all your wisdom. Intuition is so relevant to taking action and staying in creation. Yes. Amazing. My brother, thank you for all your wisdom. You're welcome. I know it's getting late for everybody over there. So thank you for having me. 
Yeah, and we're going to see you again. One, I'm going to we're going to run together again soon. Oh yeah, we will. And a live. Will. There's going to be a live one that we can all be at. <laughs> yeah. In YKO, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right. all right, my friends. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Thanks, Rick. <laughs> Good night. Drink your ionics. <laughs>